and welcome everybody to the inaugural Schools 2030 Global Forum. We are so excited to have all of you Schools 2030 colleagues, partners, and friends from all over the world here with us today. Schools 2030 represents a philosophy and that philosophy is when we bring diverse stakeholders together we can have opposing views, challenging views, a diversity of opinion. Because we all know to achieve the ambition of quality, equitable education for all, we all need to work together for this massive goal. We need to have this complete uh, redesigning of how we make policy using everyone sitting around each other. And that's the point with the Schools 2030 Forum. We say it's about connecting schools, systems, and societies. So it's a very unusual forum because we have teachers, we have government, we have researchers, we have donors, we have civil society organizations, so they can think together rather than, as they usually are, working in their own silos. We need a better situated system that sets a learner from the start when the learner knows exactly where they are headed towards. We must keep improving. So if you're going to improve all the time and offer better services, then you must keep reflecting. The 21st century schools we're talking about, critical thinking, creative thinking, assertiveness, self-awareness and so on, are the essence of democracy. They're not just talking about employability. This is a very good opportunity that the stakeholders have the opportunity to reflect on what we want to achieve and how our schools should be and what do we need to do in order to ensure that by 2030 we achieve the target that we have set for ourselves. Schools 2030 operates with a three-step model for educational change. Step one is assess, step two is innovate, and step three is showcase. Valor, innovar, na ponesa. Schools 2030 teachers assess the holistic learning levels and the quality of the classroom environment. They have assessed challenges to identify gaps within their learning environment. And within this, they are using contextualized assessment tools that, they, that tell the story of what's happening in their classrooms and in their communities. And our question is, what do schools need from other education actors to assess and use assessment data? And when I speak about other education actors, I mean many of us in the room here, researchers, policy makers, funders, practitioners. What do you need from us to assess and use assessment data? Thank you very much. Here in this way, the researchers can help us to provide appropriate and relevant data what are the challenges a student is facing and how can he or she learn better? What are the appropriate strategies we can use to overcome the challenges? How can we improve the shortcomings? What are the gaps and how, are, how they can be filled? So, and they can also give us some recommendations and suggestions to other stakeholders like policymakers. Yes, on the basis of that recommendations and suggestions, poly policy makers can plan. We have to make the system flexible enough in order to adapt to the specific needs of all children. And we have to be aware that there are many, many children who are left behind because of their language, because they are refugees, because they, are, uh, they have a different uh, sexual orientation, because they are from a migrant community. Uh, because they are poor, uh, because they are experiencing some kind of transient or permanent trauma. walimu walipewa fursa ya kuleta ubunifu wa kiufundishaji 
na kwa sasa wamebuni vitu vingi sana utakuta wamebuni vifaa vya kufundishia kama unavyoviona hapa na wamevisha vitumia darasani kwa zaidi ya miezi sita saba na wameanza kutuambia matokeo ya, ya makubwa sana ambapo watoto wanaonesha wana ya, ya, ya pata mfano shule ya msingi to ngoma ambapo wamegundua kifaa kinaitwa T learning ambacho kinatumika darasa la awali kimesaidia watoto sasa wanaweza kupata studies za awali kwa haraka za ku, za, za KK kulinganisha na hapo awali when we want to achieve results in innovation in education we have to look at the entire spectrum of innovation in, in education we should look at policies and frameworks we should look at research and evidence generation and that means it could be having researchers it could be having academia it could be having educators and teachers themselves sharing their personal experiences and sharing anecdotes teachers who can teach innovatively using a number of uh, methods rather than talk and chalk as we use or as we have grown up seeing talk and chalk even though there was a number of um, initiative whereby classroom used to be active and engaging but nowadays at this century we are expecting to have project based learning we are expecting to have like a problem based learning and other you know, innovative and interactive approaches for our teachers because i feel like students these days they kind of learn in different ways you know some people they learn by vi visually you know some people learn by listening some learn by doing i always have fun in my business lessons because they're always real life examples because that's how business works. I, I like doing things physically instead of just reading off a book. I think that's an, a really effective way of learning. And have our children not just to use technology, but they need to create technology. And so it's very important that we understand innovation is a risky business. We have to be willing to try and we have to be willing to fail. And if, in case we fail, then at least we have learned something through the process. Again, as we always say, we have to fail fast and fail forward. So I think that's like that should be at the heart, um, having that open mindset, having that willingness to collaborate, to try things out. I think that's at the heart of innovation. One of the things that I've really learned through the journey, as, as you said, um, is that teachers are natural innovators. Kwa hiyo tukanda darasa huru ambalo mtoto ataweza kusoma kitu kwa kuona. Lakini pia kuna baadhi ya vitu tunavitengeneza kwa kutumia mazingira yetu haya haya. Kwa hiyo wanakuta wanatumia mazingira yao kwa ajili ya kujifunza zaidi kwa vitendo na sio tu kwa maneno darasani. Eu penso que o que precisa mudar e o que precisa ser refletido é compreender que a educação é uma educação plural que não existe um, um modelo único e que é necessário olhar para as especificidades de cada local para construir uma educação significativa e que seja, de fato, para aquele povo e para aquele lugar. Nimeweza kuona matunda mbalimbali ya program na solution ambayo tumefanya yani darasa kiwanda kwani nimeona wanafunzi wengi wameweza kubuni mbinu mbalimbali mbadala ambazo zimeweza kuwafikirisha na kuwa na mawazo bunifu Darasa kiwanda limenisaidia mimi binafsi kuperform vizuri masomo yangu kwa kupitia hizi practice ambazo tunazifanya We need to support our teachers a little bit more. We need to train our teachers a little bit more. So we have to make sure that teachers are nurtured with very appropriate pedagogical skills. I have to say that the teacher has to be able to learn the skills of the teacher to be able to learn the skills of the teacher and to be able to learn the skills of the teacher. I have to say that the teacher has to be able to learn the skills of the teacher anasoma kwa vitendo na nakuwa yeye ndio mtumshi anashiriki kwa kiwango kikubwa katika ujifunzaji wake.
So yes, we really need to reimagine. We need to think on how better to organize our education system. Part of it is how must we increase public resources into education, but how do we make better use of those resources so that we can make the most out of it because resources are not going to be enough in any case. And I call upon uh, all nations that it is also our responsibility as a global solidarity to make sure that we support transformation, education transformation that's going to take place. That is a new conversation to actually promote a sustained investment, not an expenditure, an investment in international education. We have the next eight years ahead of us to achieve SDG 4 by the year 2030. But 2030 alone is not going to do it. It's schools 2030 that is going to do it. Come on,